All right. I have granola bars too. Yes. I meant to open these. I'm gonna have one of these when I have to later. I'm in this. Uh, I'm in the gym town. Right. I remember. I was gonna go challenge the gym. And I was gonna see the levels. I was gonna go see the levels in the gym, and I was gonna decide if I needed to candy up because I've been behind in levels for a while now. Let's see. So we got flesh, ham puppet, yep, Marissa, Affleck. I'm gonna put Marissa up front. Marissa and Affleck are the lowest levels. Winter. Oh, we're in a new month. Right, right, right. Now it's winter time. All right, I don't know anything about this town. So I'm just gonna go right to the gym. So the gym's, the gym doesn't change its look at all, huh? Oh, that's grand. Welcome to Opelucid. Here's some fresh water, stay hydrated. Would you like, how do you like these dragon statues? The gym is the only place in Unibo with statues this size. Climb on the dragon's head and aim for the top of the other dragons with Draden Blade Blues. Dragon type Pokemon are his specialty. Just between you and me, dragon types are weak to ice moves as well as moves of their own type, meaning dragon. Dude, this music is great. It reminds me of uh, Pokemon Stadium. You know, Pokemon Stadium 2 had like really grand music to it. How do I. I guess I just move. Okay. Always aim for the top like a dragon taking flight. Okay. Alright. Hand growth. What level are you? 51? Oh, no. Uh oh. Dude, look how green he is. That did so much damage. I'm using some candies, chat. I'm using some candies. Oh my god, yeah, I'm using candies. <laughs> oh, ah! I have to. I'm not gonna do anything crazy, though. I'm gonna put them at, like, 48. Basically, the new, new FO's level. That's all. Load my content, load my content, load my content. Content loaded. Save state, load state, Tauros! Yes. Get in there. I didn't think I'd get killed by a crit, but I really should have expected it. Are you... boy? <laughs> How he lived. That was an embarrassingly low amount of damage. Hammer arm? No, I kind of want hammer arm. Do I want hammer arm? You know what? I have so many Pokemon with Earthquake that I might as well just get rid of it for hammer arm. Because I don't have any fighting coverage at all. And I have uh, four Pokemon who have... F yeah, every Pokemon on my team basically has Earthquake. <laughs> So there's no reason not to. So I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, crockery, yeah. Are you staple and thickum? Yes. Actually, let me do this. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I'll go fight the basketball players. Sit the triple battles. I don't know what Verizion is. Remember, Verizion is on the next route. So, 
Oh, right, I was gonna check out that other route, too, by, uh, by what you call it. Because I didn't really do much, uh, investigating there. Did you all love this game champ? Oh, great. Well, so much for that plan. Okay. Well, I can press Earthquake here. I'm gonna fly on the champ. And I'm gonna Meteor Mash the Pidgeot. I cannot believe, out of everything on the field right now, Love Disc is going first. I'm upset. Greatly upset. Uh, please don't lose to a Love Disc. That would be highly embarrassing. Alright, if Machamp attacked Mamoswine, that's that's pretty cringe. Okay. Do you think Ice Shard will kill Love Disc from this range? I think it will. Yeah. This won't kill though. I've made a foolish choice with that one. Oh, right, you can do that. Okay. No problem. No problem, no problem, no problem. There you go. Now you go out for getting this up. Okay. Okay. D it's alright. Now, did one of these houses heal me? I didn't actually check. Nope. 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 I really don't want to go all the way back. Damn, the whole world changed in the blink of an eye. You see that? Newcomer, let's battle without saying a word. Are you ready? No. <laughs> Where is... No, I want you to heal me. I'm sure one of these houses have to have something, right? No. Nothing. Nothing, huh? I guess, you know, it's at least nice you get to visit these... These extra areas, because these areas in the original black and white aren't, like, accessible. There's no one here. You're, uh, you, once you get to Nimbasa, you're only allowed to go to the left. Why don't you rest in this house? Oh, good. Nope. Why don't we move into this house? Nope. This one? Oh, there we go. There we go. Alright, very good. You go to Nimbasa when you get to, uh... You go through the Twist Mountain, I think it's called. I don't remember much about Twist Mountain, but I do recall it being, like, very skippable in winter because of the way the snow works. And then, you, you know, you go to Icarus or whatever the hell it's called. And then you go to Dragon Spiral Tower, and then you're in Opelousid. And then all the stuff between Nimbasa and Opelousid on the right side is post-game. You know, this is fine. I'll keep with this. Okay. But in this game, it does it a little bit differently. Aside from the, you know, the beginning areas being different. Once you get to Mistralton, the game's like, Oh, you can't go through Twist Mountain, so... Fly across the country into this new world. Oh, this is terrible looking. They're all weak to Earthquake, though. Fly across the country to get to this uh, other town, then you go through Twist Mountain, and then you're at Undella, and then it's like, oh, cool, I'm in Undella Town. I don't remember if you can go to Black City or White Forest right away, but... Uh, let's see. Now, Golem probably has 30 and or doesn't die in one hit to either of these moves, so I'll just do it. 
I have zero, zero percent interest in Pokemon Unite. And I think it's hilarious how many people are playing it after when it's announced, people were shitting on it. That's how it be though. I won't support that. There's no way I'd support that. Oh, it's got Tencent's name behind it. Why would anyone support that? Yo, check out the newest Pokemon game. And we got, we got, uh, we're playing. We got to level up our, we're leveling up our Snorlax. We're going to be the best, best Boba player. Like, all right. All right. How quickly people change. But that's what happens when product new. When product new, people become interested in product. And then... It's a good way to way to make some cash. There you go. Yeah, there's microtransactions, and I know. I don't I don't like Nova genre in general. I thought the presentation for it was pretty embarrassing. Like it made me feel awkward to watch because it didn't look it didn't look that great. Okay. It didn't look that great, and it didn't look like the people who were playing it truly enjoyed it. And then, you know, people were shitting on it when it came, when it got announced. Like, wow, that's what they're that's what they're ending their Pokemon Direct with? This? This is amazing. In the worst possible way. And now the game's out, and it's like, oh, actually, the game is totally really good, and I'm, I'm a Pokemon I'm a Pokemon tuber, and I, I'm gonna play it, and I'm gonna play a bunch of it. D d please ignore every single negative thing I said about it prior to its release. Now I'm playing it, and now it's popular, so I want, I want revenue from it, okay? Please give me revenue from it. So no, I don't. Uh, I don't have much of an interest in it at all. But this is Pokemon in general. You know, whenever a new Pokemon game gets announced, it's the same cycle every single time. Sword and Shield was the same way. It never really changes with these people. This Pokemon game looks like trash. It looks like garbage. It looks like ass. Hey, Nintendo. Nintendo Game Freak Pokemon Company is now paying you to say good things about the game that you've been bashing publicly for. The entirety of its announcement. Are you gonna do it? Of course I am. <laughs> of course I am. Because that's free money. <laughs> Wait, didn't I fight this thing before? Different trainer. Different trainer, different trainer. No problem, no problem. But we always end up in some kind of conversation about, uh... Gotcha games when it comes to Pokemon, huh? People hate it on black and white. Yeah, I don't know what that was either because I didn't... I wasn't really on the internet to say either. I liked, uh... I was excited for black and white. Oh, Jesus. Because all the new Pokemon was exciting to me. I was kind of looking forward to it being a bunch of new Pokemon. That's quite an interesting thing too. Uh, Gen 5 decided to create an, an entire region of new Pokemon, no returning Pokemon, and that was bad. But like, it was fine. It, it was people people wanted it until it happened, and then they were like, "No, what the fuck is a pass orb?" What? A mysterious orb containing the power of the Unova region. It could be used to generating pa- What does- What? I don't know what that means at all. Now it's a classic. Well, just remember. GameCube games. Oh, I don't have a Pokemon with Surf anymore. Hmm. Uh. Poop clown. <laughs> I'll get a reflect. <laughs> Is our model legally allowed to have surf? Doesn't matter. Surf it on poop clown. Yeah. Skull fossil. Yeah, that's my big old chrome dome. Hmm. It, this happens for every Pokemon game. You just gotta, you just gotta accept it, I suppose, and not get too bum bum bothered by it. Happens every time, man. Pokemon game gets announced, Pokemon game bad, uh, and then Pokemon game come out, and Pokemon game not so bad. And whether it's actually not so bad or because they, you know, they're 
they're mi milking it for for ad revenue. It depends. It really depends. Hmm. Uh. There we go. <laughs> Poop Clown's got a. He's got a good time in the freestyle. <laughs> We are in the fun route. Huh. Oh! Ew! I'd like to remind you that some people think that Pokemon... Pokemon died when Gen 2 came out, so... This is, this is just how it goes. Fern Ape is not too good. Pokemon was at its uh, Pokemon was at its peak, and it never got better past Red and Blue. I'm sure there are some people who legitimately believe this, no matter what you try to convince them. Takes all kinds. There are probably also Toho fans that will try to convince you that PC98 was the greatest pop, was the greatest point in Toho's entire history, and everything after that is a sham. In which case, those people are hard to take seriously. I don't care if you like PC98 characters or not, but like, <laughs> come on. I, I can't honestly expect me to believe that PC98 was peak Toho. Come on now. Come on now. Ledian again. How many Ledians have I seen in this fucking world? Well, I have Rock Slide with Crockery, so. Alright. It's fine. <clears throat> Could you imagine if Pokemon ended in Gen 2? How early that would be? Dust Ox looks nice, actually. Like, here's here's Pokemon Red and Blue, here's Pokemon Gold, Silver, Crystal, and that's, like, that's the end of Pokemon. That's as far as Pokemon makes it. What kind of world that would be? You know what world that is? That's a world where Digimon won. <laughs> Digimon won the battle. And came out as the more popular series. <laughs> Verzion, here we go. Totodile? The Forbidden Starter? Alright. I can't believe Totodile escaped Bianca's grasp just to reach me in Verizion form. Alright. Digimon is cool. I agree. I, actually, I don't have anything negative to say about Digimon. I'm just saying that there was a time where Digimon and Pokemon were pretty interlinked in popularity, and it's clear which one which one took off better than the other. <laughs> Imagine Yokai Watch took it over. Don't worry, give it three years, and it'll all, it'll be it'll be all about Ten Ten. Season one time. I wouldn't say season one times. I thought Season 2 and Season 3 of Digimon were quite good. Although I don't remember much about them at all. Season 2 is with Vmon and all that, and I love those guys. And season 3 is with Geomon and those, and I, uh... I liked, uh... I, oh shit, careful there. I liked a lot of Digimon designs in that. I really should watch it again, though. But there's also the Digimon 2020 reboot, right? I should check that out as well. There was definitely uh, there was definitely a point in time where Pokemon and Digimon were competing pretty fiercely with each other. That's for sure. It has the habit of biting anything with its developed jaws, even its trainer needs to be careful. Yeah, season three is darker than I remember. That's my boy. My boy socks. <clears throat> Digimon Tamers is great. That's the newest one, yeah. 
It's still, it's still going. It's still going. I don't know, but like, it seemed like uh, Digimon had a... Digimon definitely had a period in time where it slowed down, but then like Cyber Sleuth came out and it really picked back up. Tamers of Season 3. Oh! I didn't know it was named that. I was thinking Season... F it is, it's season four, right? Uh, where they start like fusing with the Digimon. I didn't like that very much. And the, the, the detectors, the little pedometers that they had, the Digimon detectors that look like Digivices, those were cool. Those were set in season four lore. I remember that, but I never really liked uh, season four because I thought it was weird that they fused with their Digimon. And I say that even though uh, that's exactly what happens for the Digimon in season three as well. I can't remember the, his name. Uh, the final, the final Digivolution of all the, uh, of like Renamon, Geomon, and Patamon. I don't remember them at all. I actually don't know anything about Renamon's evolution at all. <laughs> Geomon's the only one I, I remember. And I don't remember the name of Terriermon's uh, evolutions, but I know, I know, uh, I remember what the champion form looks like. He's got the pants and the Gatling guns, and then there was the, uh, I think it's Rabidmon is the ultimate. Hmm. Heard about the guy who made Serial Experiments Lane and Techno Laws. I don't know what that is, but I have heard that Serial Experiments Lane is very fucking weird and trippy. I never watched it because there's a lot of episodes and it seems like it takes a long time for it to pick up. And that's a hard sell. And I say that as someone who has watched Steins Gate. I, uh, I actually really like Steins Gate. But the best way I can describe Steins Gate is, dude, it gets good after 15 episodes, trust me. And that's really hard to sell someone on. So, like, I don't I don't think I could ever convince someone to check out a series that takes that long to get rolling. Because you get bored. And the humans are all about getting fucking bored. Lane's only 13 episodes? I thought it was more. Can't go down that. You won't get back up. There's no exploring to do on this floor. Or, or root. What are you doing in the water? Renamon, Sakuyamon, Gilmon, Gallantmon, Terriermon, Gardomon. Wait, you're telling me Renamon's Mega is called Sakuyamon? Are you serious? <laughs> I didn't know that, that's sick. Gallantmon sounds familiar. Gardomon? I can't even remember what that fucker looks like at all. Sakuyamon, I didn't know that. I I only uh I only know Renamon. I know Geomon, Growlmon, or Growlmon, because every fucking Agumon for version needs a war form, I guess. I don't know what's up with that. Man, I should check that shit out again. I wanted to watch the original Digimon series again, but it's like 200 episodes. It's such a fucking commitment. How's the new one that's airing right now? Isn't it like a reboot of the original series? Is it good? Is it worth watching? I might check that out if it's like, I mean, it probably is going to take a while for it to conclude, but if it's like the first season but less filler, like DBZ Kai, then I would probably check that out. Uh... It's a bit of a mess. Oh, shit, that's rough. I expected filler. I mean, it was a Saturday morning cartoon esque type of show, right? Original is 52 episodes. What? Are you sure? I found a site that I found a site that exclusively has Digimon episodes, and it told me there was like 203 of them. Did it combine all the seasons or something? I should have came over here first. 200 would be like the first three or four seasons. Oh, I see. In that case, then that's that's not as bad as I thought. That is a very blue Nido Queen. Were there any seasons after that, though? I actually don't know. What come? What came after season four? Anything? Or did it just? Is that the point where it kind of stopped and started going with, uh, you know, being quiet? I suppose. Nice. Sabers was season five. It was Ro Cross Wars was season six. Oh, there was more. 
Okay, I don't know anything about five or six. My my Digimon knowledge pretty much stops at uh, season four. I really should check it back out though. I don't see why not. I enjoyed it. Oh boy. Now he'll have Drill Run and Rock Wrecker, so I can't really afford to switch. Scary. Try, there's the reboot, there's a lot. Season 7 was so bad that even the creators seemed to try to pretend it didn't exist. Uh oh. <laughs> did they pull a did they pull a serious retcon or something? Like uh you know Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat released Armageddon. And Armageddon the entire plot of MK9, the reboot of the series, was that was to undo Armageddon. So they actually worked it in, out in canon to to prevent the events of a game happening, because Armageddon was not a good game. Armageddon was not a very good game at all. I had my fun with it, but it wasn't good. Meat is fucking impotence, dude. Insanity. But champ. Okay, okay. Sequel to six, uh, six is already kind of bleh. I see, I see. I really hope I don't get a uh, bodied here. Oh, okay. So I guess that's where. When did uh? That won't kill me. It might recoil damage him. I don't know. Shadow Ball's fine. Armageddon was very fucking weird. <laughs> Every character was in the game. There was there was so little balance in terms of characters that it was almost like funny. Weapon styles were silly. Uh, stage hazards that immediately ended the fight were funny. The fact that one of your defensive options was lying down on the ground was hilarious to me. <laughs> The fatalities were all streamlined to just be like inputs for all characters, nothing unique about them. And a lot of characters' moves were like three or four special moves and that was it. Another Machamp. Beacon's probably dead. Because I'm gonna get cross chopped or flamethrowered. But this might kill Heat Wolf, so. Okay, good. Don't cross chop me. Submission and he missed. Not bad, not bad at all. They're only gonna be focused on Mortal Kombat, though, with the success of 9. And of course, we get the, the microtransaction hell that is Mortal Kombat, and it's super gore. They just gotta keep one-upping the gore every time they make new games, and it's, uh, quite frankly, it's a little disgusting. Uh, yeah, you know what, this is fine. We got your pogey here. See, I've watched all of, uh, pretty much all of Pokemon. I didn't watch, uh, I haven't watched Sun and Moon yet. I haven't watched the season after that. Ooh, monkey. Oh. K10 trailer with E3 with bad rap music. I actually don't know what you're talking about, but I I do remember the Doom trailer having that. Doom, it I think it was Doom Eternal. I'm I'm 90% sure it was Doom Eternal. But Doom Eternal had you know they had they had the composer for Doom, the who could do Doom music. 
But what they ended up doing was they made the they made the commercial for Doom have like some random I wouldn't say I guess not random maybe people knew him I didn't know him they had some they had a guy rap and the rap was just not accurate at all to Doom as a series and like the so the game people were excited for the game but that was a pretty staunch like dislike of the the promotional trailer and you gotta wonder why the fuck they thought that would work. It's very agile before going to sleep, it extinguishes the flame to prevent fires. Well, it's a very smart monkey, isn't it? <laughs> Generic game trailer music. I've talked about this before, about gamer music. You know what I'm talking about when I say gamer music. It's gamer music is the kind of music that they put in game trailers that makes people it makes you think oh yes this is intended for gamers it's always some high energy dubstep or electronic music that just makes you not want to be a part of it or it's rap because rap apparently is popular with gamers I don't really know I might have had room to space it out but it's too late for that now besides I might not even get to use it it's up to chat ew inverse dandelion. Well, whatever, it's dead now. I hate- I hate game trailers, dude. I hate them. It's part of the movie trailers as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But why is it present in both? Why is it about that music that makes marketing think it, it, it works? I mean, I guess clearly it works because they they see results. I guess. Oh, this place got fucked. Sweetheart. Okay. Thought music that fits the game should be what's used. <laughs> get this guy. Get this. Get the, get the, get out of here with that shit. You think that's correct? <laughs> Come on. What are you thinking? That's not how it goes. Marketing's- look here, here's the thing. Marketing's I plan is to sell the game to as many people as possible, not just the people who they know are going to buy it. So marketing ends up focusing on the demographics that aren't already going to buy the game, which turns into a complete mess because those people often don't give a shit about the game. Catering and pandering are a big problem for that too. You know how it goes, chat. I don't need to tell you how this goes. But they'll always market their game to a demographic that they do that doesn't isn't already gonna, you know, buy the game because they want to increase the number of sales beyond just that. And it, you know, it's a business, I understand that, it makes perfect sense to me, but they always seem to go for like they always they all everyone goes for the same market, I suppose. The boring, inoffensive, like, you might like this. Look at it, it's got cool visuals and point and shooty and then... Right? Stuff like that. No, they can't have them do a funny cartoon dance because they can't market it to children. And believe me, they fucking would if they could. You know that and I know that. If they could advertise M-rated games to children through means of that, they would. Unfortunately, there are things called laws that prevent that. For them, anyway. Remember when the ESRB was like an actual thing that you was used to gauge ratings for games, and now it's just a, a nut. It's just a letter on the box for some people now. All right, forty-eight is good. Dragon Rush, no. Master Chief is in Fortnite. Yeah, you got me there. I, I don't have an answer to that one. I guess they can get away with calling that game cartoon violence. I don't know, but it's still M-rated. You know, like, you're a kid, you can't buy an M-rated game, but now it's like, oh, this, this kid who is in elementary school is playing Call of Duty. It's like, rated M for mature. Well, that's the farthest thing from that is playing that right now. The first Pokemon in this gym was level 51. That's why I used rare candies there. <laughs> so I can be close to the level without getting absolutely shit stomped, but not overkill. The 
ESRB was established after MK came out because MK was violent. God, this music is so good. It's so grand. It 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 reminds me of Pokemon Stadium too. 100 percent Also a really unsafe gym layer. Shh, don't tell them that. It's old, it's tradition, baby. 51, yep. The other guy has a Tangro. This guy has a Trimeco. Wow. Oh, I have Crunch. Pitching. Eat him. How does how does Aerodactyl crunch when he has no teeth? That's fine. That's fine. There is no problem here. See? Everything is good. Pick a route and fight the battle you want to fight. There's virtually no reason to use Crockery because he has the same... He has the same moves as everyone else, and then he has Fury Cutter. <laughs> what? Like, alright. Go this way. Yeah! Defense is everything. Look at, Aerod look at Aerodactyl's portrait on the side. He's got no teeth. How's he crunching with no teeth? Share him. Alright. Not defensive. Lucky chant. That's defensive. Crit blocker. And that's the kill. Just on sunny day. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Oh, crab battle. Disgusting. They were meant for each other. <laughs> she looks like a gingerbread man. Kind of share him, doesn't Sunny Day turn one? The one that wants to put up a lucky chant. Crab battle. Triple battle or rotation battle? No. I don't want to do either, actually. I'll pick the lesser of two evils, I suppose. B. Welcome to the Game Awards! We're gonna show off a new IP. Chat, I'm gonna make a bingo for next time. That's what it's gotta be. New IP. It's a first person shooter. They got some, they got some uh, music in there that's totally gonna get you DMCA'd. Uh, the release date is coming out soon. TM. And then you can check off your final bingo slot once it's out as being painfully mediocre game smiley face i've seen it all before every new ip looks the goddamn same man why did i miss why do they all look the same why are they always first person shooters why do the trailers never show us real gameplay anymore what's up with that it's not even a trailer if they're like, oh, yeah, yep, this is a pre-rendered cutscene, and a character is talking to themselves, and then they open their eyes, and it's like, whoa, game coming out soon. It's like, wow, gameplay, I'm excited for that. Does it have a pre-order? That's the free space, dog. All 
Alright, excellent take. You cannot do anything. Game's full price. There's going to be season pass. It's going to be DLC. The one on the right fights triple battles. The one on the left fights rotation battles. Well, guess what? I don't want to do either of those, but I will do one of them. I love video games. Take me back to the Game Awards, where we can give more awards to games that deserve them. And the winner, for the most sus video game of all time, goes to... Uh, Amogus. Please clap. Can I go north? I should check that. Let me check that. I caught the total though. Yes, yes I did. Mario Soup. That's a good game. It's a good game. The Last of Sus. <laughs> you don't need. You don't. You know. You don't really need my opinion on video games. I I play Nintendo games, and that's about it, really. I don't really play. I don't really play AAA games anymore. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Just don't really. I don't like, I don't like shooters, I suppose. Well, obviously. <clears throat> FIFA. Uh, well, yeah, EA, EA is its own league. I have to wonder how the world works that every year we do the same thing over and over again, and yet they still continue to make money off it. It, it doesn't make any sense to me. New Year comes out, it's the exact same game, it's full price retail, and then it comes out and it still makes enough money. Every. Single. Time. For a new game the next year. How does this keep happening? Oh, this is the rotation battle person. Oh. Solomon's best to quit a wob of that. Hey, that Solomon's is kind of cool. People need their sports fix. And play the game that came out last year. What's the difference? I don't get it. Uh. Hmm. That Wabafet's got green lipstick. I understand. Nothing. Those dragons aren't mechanical, they're made of stone, dummy. Come on now. They're made of stone. I'm dead. I am so fucking dead. That's gonna do nothing, I'm gonna get countered. He failed! Catch another one! There's gotta be some reason people don't stay with the last year's games. Probably because they want to be up to date. You know, you remember when you were a kid, you didn't have the latest product, and the other kids were like, Wow, you don't have latest product? Lame. People feel this, uh, people feel this strange urge to have the latest product at all times. And that, that ends up extending into adulthood. They gotta have the new stuff. If they, if they don't have the new stuff, they can't stay up to date with everyone else, and they can't they can't communicate as a real human being anymore. So you know you need the new FIFA game because if you're playing FIFA with a buddy, you need to be able to talk about the new one. If you if you dare tell someone in public you're playing FIFA 2K uh, 2K and you know 2K 21K is out, well fuck man, that you're an embarrassment to the party. You're gonna get kicked out of the pub. That's it. Goodbye. Get out of here. Out of my face. That's the kind of mentality people develop as a child. Same thing with Call of Duty, man. You're playing the previous Call of Duty? What are you doing? New one's out. Play that one. Play that one instead.
He's playing the old game. He's playing not game. And you know how teenagers are. Teenagers, teenagers love to be to like play violent video games because they think, think it makes them seem it makes them cooler than they are. It was hard. It's hard being a fan of uh, rated E for everyone games when you're a teenager because if you're not playing Rudy Tootie Point and Shooty, then then what are you what are you doing? You don't own an Xbox. You don't own a PlayStation. <laughs> well, you got a GameCube. Get the fuck out of here. What are you doing with that? You're not allowed to enjoy things. You gotta get a conform, baby. That's just how it goes. Some people just have this like in it, it like they build up this thing where they, they gotta they gotta have the most latest thing and they gotta be up to date, right? If they're not up to date then they're they're struggling. Can't even breathe anymore. It's crazy. That's how it works. That's how she worked. Once you get old enough, you, and you didn't really bother with that. You, you know, you get to this point where it's you just play whatever the fuck you want, right? Or you grow out of it. But for some people, it just gets... It's just this is how it be. It has to be that way, because otherwise these things wouldn't continue to sell, right? Like, I'm pretty sure last year EA just straight up, like, released the... The new game they released, on the back of the box, they advertised how it was basically the same game as last year's. Like, they just- there- there was absolutely no sugarcoating. Well, I mean, there was definitely sugarcoating, but they essentially just said, yes, you're paying for the same game you bought last year, and- and people still bought it. That's pretty impressive, wouldn't you say, that somebody would- Like, imagine you told someone, you told someone that they're paying for the same game they bought last year, and then the back of the box essentially says the exact same thing and they still buy it. What do you do at that point? <laughs> like, I don't think anything you say at that point works. Scott. Let's get his burger. Explode, okay? Yuck. Over rock slide. Everything here is level 51. I won't kill, but it might flinch. Uh, that's annoying. He lived that pretty well. Looked like Pack let us soul. Ah! Not quite, not quite close enough in coloration. Almost, though. If it was inverted, maybe. Oh my fucking god, are you kidding me? You got a free hit and you missed. Well done, dumbass. Please stop biting me. Holy shit. That's good. The Cacklet of Soul Fight. Oh, wow. The Cacklet of Soul Fight is interesting because you support. You have to start it with 1 HP, and if you don't have an high enough speed, you're forced to dodge at least like 3 attacks before you can begin the fight. Sometimes you just lose at that point. It was a legitimate boss fight. I mean. I mean, a like, legitimately difficult final boss fight. It's kind of a pain in the ass you have to go through the filler fight every time you wanted to, like, attempt, right? Alright, so the next one should be his ace. Magnezone. Yep, that's the ace. Citrus player, huh? He might potion here, but he's gonna discharge for sure. I am getting magnet pulled. <laughs>
<laughs> Bro, I got magnet pulled. <laughs> couldn't do anything. I couldn't retreat. Shrew Queen was tough. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that boss fight being uh, pretty rough. I don't remember much about Pirates of Time, though. The only thing I didn't like about Mario Luigi is that there were some fights you had to do in that game where you were on a timer. Though the Koopalings fights with the timer and didn't like that very much. That actually, speaking of that, there's something I want to try sometime in the future for Bowser's Inside Story. Can't do it on Mario Luigi. Superstar for that reason. But I'm playing like three or four RPGs right now, so I need to... Actually, now that I think about it, the only thing I'm playing right now is RPGs. <laughs> I gotta chill the fuck out on those, alright? Just relax on that. <clears throat> That's my Machamp. Alright, let's see. So, oh, whoops. Wrong button. Stream day off. Stream day off. Go on that cycle for a while. I'll, I'll get you know I'll get some regularly scheduled pro programming once the uh, video's done. I'll get back to work on that tomorrow. I might be able to finish the uh, the audio. We'll see though. We'll see. It's still gonna take a while, but well. At least I can see the end, so to speak. Hmm. The time fights are exclusive to the Koopalings, though. It's like Roy, Wendy, and Larry are the only ones you have to do under a time constraint. And that's it. I remember having a lot of trouble with Roy on my first ever playthrough, and I don't remember why. I just couldn't beat him. But Wendy and Larry were not nearly as difficult. I honestly don't know why, though. Era. The Bowsette fight is kind of filler, is the thing, right? It's kind of filler. She definitely has a few, like, legitimate attacks, but the whole, the real fight is afterwards, right? Hmm. Do I have an ice type attack? No. This should work, though. Bellet is more of a skill check. I'd say less of a skill check, more of a level check. I actually grinded in that game to level... The highest level I ever got in Mario Luigi was level 51. Uh, I was able to kill Kakleta's soul in three hits. Because I believe, uh, I believe her heart has 800 HP. And Splash Bros did like 391. <laughs> so Splash Bros, Bounce Bros, Splash Bros killed her. So I could beat the final boss in three hits. I was like, oh cool. You know when you're a kid and you just get bored and like play a, the same game over and over again? I just kept wa walking through jokes then and battling enemies and getting my level up to unreasonably high levels. To a point where I could Kill the final boss in three hits. Hmm. Balletta and Bowsette are different characters, though. Balletta's real. That's the important distinction. I have Bulldoze. Yes. The broken secret scroll attack deals like 500 damage. I could not use those at all, to be honest with you. Swing Bros and Cyclone Bros could not for the life of me figure out how the fuck to get them to work. So I just never did. That doesn't mean I didn't get them though. I spent 500 coins for that fucking secret skill because that cheap asshole Thwomp was like, Yeah, spend 500, learn secret skill. Like, who just has 500 coins lying around? What was that insanity about? The last Mario Luigi Superstar Saga speedrun I saw, I like, got to the top of Bean Bean Mountain, 
and then they did some kind of wrong warp and then beat the game and I was like, oh. So they spend, uh, they play the first hour of the game and then they warp to the credits. I thought that wasn't very exciting. Man, that game was fucking great. That game really was great. So much life, personality to it. Alright, back to the outside world. If I had a road, I might get appliances here. But I don't, so I can't. Cyclone Bro is weird but manageable, especially if there's only one enemy, so you don't need to worry about switching targets. Nah, I just used, uh... I like Splash Bros and Knockback Bros. Those are my favorite. I did like using Chopper Bros, but like... I always fucked up the timing. I start mashing too early and then I just fall and I'd be like, oh, cool. And Fire Bros and Thunder Bros were real shitty. <laughs> Like, randomly, some enemies were weak to the elements, and it, like, it only really mattered for the goo, the, the ant goos and joke's end. And, like, setting the, setting the hermit crab on fire. Like, they were pretty shitty skills. Thunder did it. They were funny to fuck up, yeah. <laughs> I agree with that. Oh, yeah, you can learn psychic. I hadn't considered the possibility that you could use a move like that. Anyway. Mm. Come on out! I was faster than it? Okay. I think Flawful's a better villain than uh, Cacletta, honestly. But I think that's also just because Fawful. Fawful isn't only in that one game. So that might have be uh, that might have reason for it. I do like the way they handled uh Kakleta, though. I think she was a good villain. That entire game had a good plot that completely went over my head when I was a kid. I just liked the Mario Luigi game, but it was quite quite solid. The coffee equipment. I used uh, I used the Excite Spring, the one that increases the long you jump, and the other one I used was I forget. I know I used two of them consistently. One of them was the Excite Spring. I think the other one was double the XP. Ooh, those look nice. I just liked a lot of the references that happened at the cafe when you got the beans. Putting the beans on it. Bowser Bowser's role in Superstar Saga is very big, despite him not really being there at the same time, which is amazing. Like, they did they really they did Bowser well, I think. Bowser showed up so many times in the game. But like didn't really show up at the same time. And then he got his own game, Bowser's Inside Story, and that game, was, that game was the best one in the series, in my opinion. I love the original, but Bowser's Inside Story is super, super good. There were, yeah, I've heard there were a few different interactions with different characters in the cafe. But a lot of them got, like, cut. Still, I enjoyed it. I liked it all. Loogie's Mansions. Full Restore, cool. Professor Alvin Gad. Not a character that's really utilized much anymore, huh? That's fine. Alright. Catch a pogey in here. What could it be? What could it be? Oh boy, oh boy. Well, I already have you, so... Exempt. There was, of course, the Geno cameo, which doesn't really do much, I, I, I admit. It, it, it's there. It's just a, it's just a Geno cameo. It's nothing to, like, explode over, but it was cool. It's a pretty cool-looking Pidgeot, actually. 
You yeah, can't clean anything, he's an old man. Oh yeah, the plot to fool Balletta. Putting Luigi in the extra dress. It worked, didn't it? You got got. The Gino cameo was cut from the remake. Yeah, I heard that was the case. Kinda lame. Kinda lame. I like that you could turn Luigi into a surfboard. That was really weird that you could do that, but I, I, I liked it. Bro, what? You're a Pidgeot. In ball, please. By flapping its wings, all its might, Pidgeot can make a gust of wind capable of bending tall trees. Uh. Bird. Yes. Special hammer moves? I don't remember. Oh, I found a ditto. <laughs> Mini Mario and Luigi Dunk. They might have called them that when they gave him the boost. That reminds me of uh, Popple. I like that guy. He was a good, uh... He was a good character. Safari Ball? That's illegal. Alright, alright. No, no problem, no problem. His name is Bird. It is a bird. That Sea King is sun bleached. Not looking good there, brother. Not looking good. Popple and Rookie having a bros attack is really neat. Yeah, I agree. Well, that happened. Sorry for thinking I would be faster than a Magnazone. Okay, sure. Whatever. Every single one of my Pokemon is susceptible to a horn drill. <laughs> Alright then. It's a cola boss. Remember that guy, the Yoshi Theater? That one? The dude who would like, he was such a Yoshi fan that he wore a Yoshi egg on his head and, and bottom and then whenever his assistant would like be an asshole, he would turn into a Yoshi egg and do like the homing shot. What the fuck was that? You ever think maybe that was a little bit weird? I'm not alone on that, right? Soul shop, great. It was one of the... It was one of the quests to get the bean star. You needed to go get all the bean fruit that were around. You know you could actually dig those up ahead of time? There was nothing stopping you. The only reason you can't get every single one of them prior is because there's one specific one that you need to, uh... You need to do Luigi have, like, go on his own and fight a piranha mini boss. Other than that, you can get every single bean fruit. Oh my god. As soon as you gain the ability to put Luigi in the ground. Of course, you wouldn't really know that they're there unless you would have act like done the game before, so it's not really a huge issue. But it was mostly just a fetch quest. The bean the bean star recovery operation was very silly, because like the first one you get is a big old long stretch of world and 
you go on a ship, you go underwater, you're on the beach, you're on a private island, you get your, your hands massaged by jellyfish ladies, and it's like, it's all well and good. Hit me up with some of that. And then, you know, you're done. You get the first piece, then the next three pieces are just like, yeah, go dye some clothes for a little bit. Go find bean fruit and feed Yoshis and have them produce egg. Like, what? Why, 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 what are we doing here? I can't even remember how you get the fourth piece. I legitimately don't remember how you get the fourth piece. I can only remember those three. I'm sure the fourth piece is pretty stupid. Alright, here's the plan. Winkle Coliseum. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you, you, uh, you, you, you get the high score for 500 Kern, and you, you Winkle acknowledge you, and then you go to the, the statue of Winkle, and then Popple's there, and he's like, that's just mine, see? I gotcha, gotcha. Those weird snail lads there? Were they weird? I like them, little snail dudes. Uh... I didn't read what move that was. By lock on. Alright, putting everyone to 48. They were really out of nowhere, though. That is, that is definitely correct. Super power. Like, you just... You, you're in the Chocola Forest. Hayes, no. You're in the Chocola Forest, you go there, there's a Koopa dude who's in your way. It's like, oh, nothing you do will get past me, I think. And then you get past him, and suddenly there's actually, like, a secret society of snails that hangs out in the forest, and they're just kind of here. They were just so sudden, it was weird. I don't remember that minigame. I, you know, I do remember that minigame quite well, actually. Pretty sure I enjoyed it. The minigame I used to grind Teehee Berries, though, was the one that you do in, uh... Uh, Fungi Valley, where you get the super ultra gamer shroom. So like the the arcade dude feeds Mario a mushroom that turns him into a fucking bean. Yeah, currency conversion is whack. Ninety nine trillion mushroom coins. Are you sure it was trillion? It wasn't billion. They gave Mario and Luigi- Prince Peasley gave Mario and Luigi uh, an insane amount of mushroom coins and it translated to 99. Which doesn't make any sense, because like, you know, they gave- you gave your mushroom coins to the bean dude who looks like Bowser at the start of the game, right? What's the conversion rate on that? If anything, why convert it to bean bean coin at all? Just keep it when you go home, you're fucking- you're- you're literally a trillionaire. Like, what? Why would I ever convert that? Huh? I'm living good for the rest of my life. I guess it doesn't matter for old Matthew and Luigi. No matter how much money they pick up on their journeys, they still live. A, they still share a bungalow. All right. No matter what happens, the economy is weird. Well, there's a bunch of sentient mushrooms ruled over by a one one lady, and then Mario and Luigi are there, I guess. You know what that reminds me of? The Blorbs. Those are great. Alright, well. That's great. The toads eat these mushrooms and they turn to big old, big old round boys. <laughs> I love those. And you go to Toad Town and there's just a bunch of them hanging out. Like you can roll them like balls. I'm dead. Oops. I forgot you're a bug type, and I'm, uh, I'm a dark type. I'll bleach that. Oops. Oh well. Back to Magazine. Alright. Being on Best for Quim? Not good. Why the fuck is it so hard to find a female combi? Why is Pokemon not that good in general? It has unique moves, which are cool. I think the Pokemon's design is pretty sick, but I don't think it's a very good Pokemon. Wonderful. I win. <laughs> Seven bags.
This dude's gym badge is really called the legend badge. That's pretty good. It's just like, you know, I ain't gonna shit on Marlin or anything like that, but this is 8th gym material. You fight this guy is Drudgigan and his Haxorish. And then you go to Marlin, he's got a fucking Jellicent, Paracosta, and a Whale Orb. Like, what? That's the 8th gym? What are you doing? How do you make the Dragon guy not the last gym? Then you get the Legend badge, then you go to Marlin, he gives you the Bubble badge. Follow me. I'll be there soon. Well, Claire gave you the Rising badge, which I don't really understand the implication of that at all. Her badge is called the Rising badge, and this badge is the Legend badge. <clears throat> the Rising Legend. They're the only two gym leaders who use dragon types, though. The other dragon type users are Elite Four members. Lance, Drosna, <clears throat> Drake. Uh, I don't know if I remember anyone. Uh, uh I, I, I guess technically the guy, the last gym guy in, in Sword and Shield, but he's more like a weather trainer than a dragon trainer. But his ace is, uh... The, 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 whatever the hell it's called. You know, the, you know the one. You know the one, the, the Raldon, I think? Maybe? That sounds right. Let me tell you a story. It's long, so listen closely. Did you get, did you get all that, chat? Did you get all that? Did you get all that? In the span of like 10 seconds, this happened. They have an airship, dude. Write that down, write that down. Restaurant and Zekrom were once two, once, once, once one Pokemon, and they split, they split to go with different people. And Kyurem is the shell of the former Pokemon. I kind of wish I could see what the complete version of that Pokemon looks like. Those are the Crazy amount of effects. That's not gonna work. Where did he even come from? It's bitter cold. And over the DNA splicer, the things are gonna get ugly. They're gonna shoot the entire town full of ice. No, it's all right. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're not gonna hurt anyone. They're good guys. They're Team Plasma. See. I lost, I didn't stand a chance. I can't believe Hax was blasting me all the way over here. We lose a battle that fast before. It's amazing. It's amazing in here. <clears throat> you pure dragon and you have thunder, fire, and ice powers. Maybe. water is happening in a second here. I don't have any grass moves. Damn it. Can't 
entire team loses the Gastrodon. Rain Dance is fine. What's your ability, though? You wouldn't think Gastrodon's that good. But. Finds a way. Oh. I don't really know anything about how the progress on the remakes are going. They're set to come out soon, though, huh? Sky drop? Fuck no. Rain stopped and why? What? Oh, I guess it was five turns because I flew up for two of them. I didn't give Aura the Battle Frontier. But not only did they not give it to a, ba the, a Battle Frontier, they hinted at it a few times in the game itself, which makes it worse than it is. I hate that the most. How they talked about it and then didn't do anything with it. If they just like refused to acknowledge it, that would have been better. But instead they were like, yeah, we know it exists, but you're not getting it. It's also the fact that Annabelle is in the uh, sword and not sword and shield, sun and moon. She's in a Can I go in here? What's the point? There's no point. Annabelle is in uh, Sun and Moon, part of the Ultra Beast side quest. And I think about her is that it's confirmed that it's, it's her from the Battle Tower, but like she doesn't remember that she's the frontier brain for that place. You can fight her in the Battle Tree too. And in the Battle Tree, I'm pretty sure it plays the original, the original like Battle Frontier theme from that Pokemon Emerald. Bayonet looks really good. Nice. It did feel pretty insulting. They just they just rehashed this stuff from the Battle Maze on and then hinted at Battle Frontier and didn't actually do anything with it. That that felt pretty fucking shitty. I hate that they did that. Ew. I didn't mind the battle tree very much. In fact, I actually liked how the battle tree didn't really have a... It, it had a few different characters you could end up fighting as the 21st round. The only thing I didn't like about the battle tree... It's gonna be a pretty lame thing to say for sure, I know. Is... The fact that all the Pokemon you fight starting from like the first round are capable of beating your team because you know in other games where if you do the beginner route if you do the beginner set of matches you the first two sets are always a bunch of like pre-evolved pokemon that aren't don't stand a chance then it's the last set that really is the problem but then you can do the single you can do the super single or just continue the win streak and past that everything gets harder and harder and harder and harder Eventually it gets to a point where you're probably just gonna get memed on by some bullshit anyway But battle tree it starts kind of like that right away. I Never uh, I never got a gold print I never did get a gold print the closest I ever got though. I got like uh, I Got to like round five or six in the arcade and platinum And I actually I did get a gold in the double battle in the battle maze on hmm. In the battle maze on double battle section. I actually did get the gold medal there 50 battles dude, I tried in singles a few times I had a <laughs> I tried a reversal speed boost Blaziken with focus sash and well, when it worked, it worked, but a lot of Pokemon have Quick Attack. Hmm. I also heard, I, I don't know if it's superstition, it's probably superstition, but I heard that the longer you go on a streak, 
the more likely you have to fight Pokemon that have a better matchup against your Pokemon. And again, I don't know if there's any truth in that at all. Sounds like a load of superstition. But the number of times I found myself in a fight where, like, the opponent's Pokemon were just absolutely fucking perfect for dealing with my team is pretty infuriating. Oh, well. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Alright. Bring it back, bring it back. What can I do to fight you? Discharge. Hmm. There we go. Gen 4 sells bad, we ain't getting Gen 5. That's all you to assume when it's not gonna sell well. It's Pokemon, dude. It's Pokemon. Even the most unpopular Pokemon games sold enough to keep the series afloat because it's fucking Pokemon. Uh, yeah, I'll just battle the other one. What's actually gonna happen is if that sales for the remake don't go well, then Game Freak is never gonna let another company touch the, uh, the IP ever again. And at the same time, I, I personally, I worry that they're, that Game Freak isn't gonna let the company handling... Ooh. I'm worried that Game Freak isn't gonna let the company handling the development of the Gen 4 remakes do anything new and exciting. So they're going to be lackluster, lackluster in comparison. And that criticism is going to go right to Game Freak and Game Freak's gonna be like, well, I guess we shouldn't have let other people do, a, do the game. That kind of thing. Now, of course, I could be wrong. I would very much like to be wrong because my uh, my nightmare scenario sounds pretty shitty, but it also sounds like something that could happen. I mean, we've we've seen seen how game development works. That's how it's gonna go. They're gonna give them the project. They're gonna tell them they're not allowed to do anything. Like a uh, chat. What game was it? What game was it? I remember there was a game. I think it was Sonic 06. I think it was Sonic 06. Or it was Sonic Boom. Uh, might have been Sonic Boom. But they, you know, Sega Sonic Team gave the game to Big Red Button. I believe it was Big Red Button. It'd be Sonic Boom then. And they wanted Big Red Button to, you know, like, make, make a new Sonic game, right? But then uh, they were like, oh, no, actually, we don't want you making... We don't want you doing stuff for, for Sonic because you're not you're not us, so you can't do uh, you can't do other stuff for Sonic. We have to do it, and then Sonic Boom turned into what it is. So Sonic Team's like they were like, yeah, make a Sonic game, and then they were making a Sonic game, and then Sonic Team was like, no, you can't you can't do new things in Sonic games because you're not us, and then the game turned into that. So it's been proven that it can happen. And it's possible that Game Freak would do that. I want to believe they won't, though. I don't think they're going to be like Sword and Shield. But I can't say for sure. They look more faithful to the DS style. With, like, the overworld view. You know, the, the traditional Pokemon style, I think. But we'll see. You know, we'll see. So I, I think that's what's going to happen. So... Game Freak's not gonna let them do anything new and inventive because they're not they're not a Pokemon company, so they're not allowed to do new things and for uh, for Pokemon Company. The games are gonna come out and they're going to be lackluster. And the games I feel like the games will probably be you know, they'll probably be good. I hope they'll be good. But with no new features or anything like that, other than a graphics overhaul and like up to date mechanics from Gen 8, it's gonna feel like a little uh, could be more. And then Game Freak's gonna be like, oh shit, looks like, look at that, people don't like it when we don't do a Pokemon game. So guess, guess we're gonna do them forever now. That's the kind of backwards ass head logic that I could expect from a video game company nowadays. I mean, we're talking about the same company here. Oh, whoops. We're talking about the same company that released Mario's 35th anniversary as a battle royale. And then three emulated versions of his best uh, 3D adventures. And then once six months passed, completely removed them from existence. Like, come on. Hope you weren't thinking better. It's 
If, if the remakes don't at least have the changes implemented in Platinum version, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> Diamond and Pearl had some issues that were definitely worked out in Platinum version. That, would, that the remake should definitely benefit from. You have two Brulooms? How did this happen? How did this happen? Alright, so I press Ice Beam. I didn't buy the... I didn't buy the 3D collection. I didn't, I didn't like the idea of it at all. I mean, I like the idea of it, but I didn't like that it was just... It was what it was, and it was a full price game, and it was timed exclusive. So I didn't buy it. It's really shitty is what it is. That's not a balloon, that's why. That's why I just got hit with punishment. I got memed on, and I didn't even see it coming. Hmm. They only had one balloon the whole time. I, I'm a fan of Nintendo games, for sure, but I don't particularly enjoy a lot of their business practices, and I'm not gonna defend them or encourage them in any, any way. They did it for Fire Emblem 1 as well. Timed exclusives. I there there hasn't uh, there hasn't been a timed exclusive in a while. Or since those games, I should say, not a while. I can't remember which button it is what. Mm. What did Platinum do to update the base game? Uh, for one, it allowed all the Gen 4 Pokemon to exist in the game. Diamond and Pearl didn't have all the Gen 4 Pokemon in it available at the start. Half of them were missing. So Platinum expanded the Pokedex, so it worked better. You've probably heard this one before, but in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, the only two fire types that you could use in the game were Chimchar and Ponyta. Those were the only fire types you could get in the entire game native to the game itself. So when Platinum came out, Magmar, Magby, EV, you know, like Magmodar and stuff, they actually let the Gen 4 Pokemon exist in the decks and you could use them all. So I don't know what they were really doing with that. I, I don't know. Oh yeah, there's also the gap between gyms two and three. Platinum made it so in generate Platinum made it so Heart Home is the third gym, whereas in Diamond and Pearl, Heart Home is the fifth gym. And you go through Heart Home, you have to go all the way to Veilstone. And it's just like, please dude, why? This was a really, really good match at the start. It's dirty, but that's okay, just don't T-wave me. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, if you didn't pick Chimchar, you didn't have uh, you didn't have a fire type. That's just how it was. Kind of a uh, silly. There's also the fact that there's a fire type Elite Four in that game, and guess what his two fire types are? Rapidash and Infernape. That's it. Flint is the fire type Elite Four, and he has five Pokemon. He has a Infernape, a Rapidash, a Steelix, a Lopunny, and a Driftbloom. But he's the fire type Elite Four. You see the problem? <laughs> That's another thing. One of the most common and annoying defensive Pokemon in the entire game that shows up is fucking Bronzor. Bronzor's only weakness, assuming they have Levitate, is fire type moves. It is what what happened there, man? What happened? I'm gonna pick up Whimsicott and put him down. I just don't really know how it happened, you know? How can you even learn that? Huh. Ponyta doesn't have a good move set. That's that's not really where the issue lies, but you are correct at the same time. Ponyta Ponyta's best attack is like flame charge for stab, and it doesn't evolve to level 40. <laughs> 
There are so many problems with it, it's insane. So you either have a Chimchar, who by the way, Chimchar and Infernape is one of the best fire types to really ever do it, so that's good. But yeah, uh, Ponyta is not a viable fire type to use. Its move pool is pretty shitty and it evolves super late into the game. Piplup only gets bubble until uh, after evolution. I'm pretty sure it gets water gum before it evolves. It gets peck when it evolves though. By the way, trying to beat Gardenia with only a Prim Pluck is impossible. Oh, you're kidding me. This is the final Pokemon? I'm embarrassed. Simisir. Yeah. Yeah. That's the good stuff. Alright, there's another badge. Uh, Flint's team... Flint's team in Generation... In Platinum is... He has Infernape still. He has Magmodar. He has Flareon. Who else does he have? He has a full team of actual, like, good fire types. I know that. Also, I'd like to remind you that the Elite Four, uh, the Elite Four, Aaron, the bug type Elite Four, uses a Beautifly and a Dustox. His team is Beautifly, Dustox, Vespaquin, uh, Trapion, and something else. And I can't remember what that last one is. And then in Platinum. He has Drapion, Vespaquin, Yen Mega, Scizor, and like Heracross. You know, good bug types. <laughs> Diamond and Pearl, yeah, Diamond and Pearl really suffered. Diamond and Pearl suffered really hard for with its Pokedex because everything in the game was affected by it, including your like opponent's Pokemon. Respect him for bringing a Beautifly and Dustox into the league, but the thing is. With the exception of Bug Maniacs, no one is using those Pokemon past certain, like, like thresholds of levels, right? Those Pokemon are not meant to be taken there, seriously. And then an Elite Four member has two of them on his team, and I'm supposed to take them seriously. <laughs> Flynn has Houndoom, Flareon, Magmodar, Rapidash, and Infernape. Okay, Houndoom was it, and he kept the Rapidash, okay. Alder is three Bug types. Alder... All those bug types are Excelgore, Excavalier, and Volcarona. Those are pretty good. Well, actually, Excelgore and Excavalier aren't actually as good as their designs would indicate. However, Volcarona is probably the best bug type. If only because it shits on literally every other bug type due to its typing. Alright, here we go. Alder's team is kind of goofy. I don't really like it that much. But I also don't really care about Alder in general because... He wasn't really much of a champion, in my opinion, because the story called for end to beat him, so you don't really ever fight him. So, and then Iris is the champion in this game, so... I don't know, I, just, I don't really think of Alder as champion. But I do, at the same time, I appreciate they tried a different story for this champion of the game. At least he has more presence than Diantha. How the fuck would anyone believe she's the champion? You meet her once, so then you meet her in the champion room, and it's like, oh, you, I know you. It's like, okay. There's no skipping this cutscene. Pew, pew, pew. Lucian has a... I think he has a... Yeah, he has a giraffe rig. In a uh, diamond and pearl, he's Mr. Mime, Girafferig, Bronzor, or Bronzong. I believe he still has Alakazam. I know he ditches one of them for Gallade. 
and I think Espeon. So I'm pretty sure he loses Mr. Mime and Drafferig, and he gets Espeon and Gallade. Either way, the, the, the Elite Four teams in Generation 4 are much better in Platinum than they are in Diamond and Pearl. Like, uh, Bertha... Bertha has Golem, Wishcash, Quagsire, Hippowdon, and Pseudo Wudo. One of those is not a ground type, by the way. And in Platinum, she has Hippowdon. I don't think she had a Mamoswine. But she has Hippowdon, Gliscor. Uh, I'm pretty sure she has a Rhyperior as well. So they actually gave them Gen 4 Pokemon, which was. Nice, because they should have had Gen 4 Pokemon to begin with. Is the layout of this ice maze different? No, I don't think so. No, I'm good. I don't remember how to battle all these guys. Oh well. Everybody saw the giant ship approaching and left. That's a good color for the This is a terrible match. <laughs> I actually can't hit it. I have ground moves and fighting moves. City is different, isn't it? I guess so. Uh, I'm only used to the one in white, too. Alder basically retired from being champion because one of his Pokemon died. And then he was forced to take over the role again to stop N, because N wanted to fight the strongest trainer to beat him and then be like, ha, now they have to listen to me. And Alder was not, uh, he was not prepared to fight a legendary. Again, he has, he has his story reasons for being the character he is, but as a result, he's rather weak as a champion. Because you don't really get to see him at full strength. And you gotta look at who you're comparing him to, right? You had a uh, in blue in the original games, Lance slash Red in Generation Two, Steven and Wallace. Well, I, I don't know about Wallace, but Steven's pretty popular. Cynthia is Cynthia is incredibly popular, and then Cynthia was the previous game to come out, so. You had to make a champion that trumped uh, Cynthia in popularity. That was not going to happen. So Alder, Alder took a different direction, and I respect the attempt. I have no idea where the fuck I am, because the town looks different. Very good. Where's the guy that got butt blasted by Haxers? Yep, you. Alder probably would have beaten him if he actually like still played the game. I guess. But he'd been... He'd been retired for a while. Cynthia is incredibly popular. I don't know if Cynthia is more popular than Red or Blue, though. That is a cool rep dash. Red and Blue are... Real, real good characters. I love them characters. They're awesome. I like Cynthia, too, don't get me wrong. But I know Cynthia is still incredibly popular because she is... A hot woman, but red and blue, dude. Red and blue are so cool. It kind of reminds me of Galarian Rabdash as well. This is fun. Galarian Rabdash, good. Genuine question. I know it's a fairy type, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone use it ever. That worked out. Was it pure fairy? Or was it part fire? That should be everything here. I think. This little guy won't hold back even if his opponent is a girl. Nurse and Grudge for two years old, man. Take care of the other. Did I not beat everyone? Did I miss someone? It's very psychic. That sounds more correct. There you go. There we go. I believe the 
Ponyta was revealed. Chat, you remember they did a, for Sword and Shield, they did a 24 hour like broadcast for Sword and Shield, and they just showed uh they just showed like footage of a forest. And for 24 hours it was just that, and then like I guess Ponyta showed up around the end of it. And there you go, new Pokemon reveal. That was the most convoluted way to reveal a Pokemon I've ever seen. Am I dead? Oh wow. They must have been real proud of it or something. Hero. This matchup would have been perfectly acceptable had I been in a better situation. Low HP music sucked. Alright, Holy Father, show him your stuff. Bring it on. Joel Peckman's alright. Is there even a type combination nowadays that would create a Pokemon with no weakness? Because uh, Sableye and Spiritomb no longer count. With uh, Fairy type being super effective against Dark. I don't know if any other type combinations create that kind of uh, situation. Hmm. I did it. I succeeded. Now there's only Zinzolin. He's at the gym. Okay. Fear Electric or Dark Poison if they have Levitate. Levitate doesn't count because that's an ability that can be negated through things like Mold Breaker. But you can't, uh, you can't really negate a Pokemon's type like Sableye or Spiritomb. I mean, you can. There are ways to do it, but it's not as, not as simple as Mold Breaker. Electros technically counts, yes, because it's a pure electric type with Levitate. But again, Levitate can be beaten by Mold Breaker. And guess what one of the most prominent Mold Breaker Pokemon is? <laughs> Excadrill. He just hits you for free with a Stab Earthquake. You're fucked. So I wouldn't call it a true non-weakness Pokemon, even if its ability does make it that way. There we go. There we go. Hmm. Pure Firemon use Burnout. Oh yeah, Arcanine can do that. They become typeless, don't they? But before they use it, they're, they're not weak. No, they don't. Oh shit. They lose Stab, though. Can they even use Burnout again after? Or is it a one-time one time move unless you switch out? I know they uh, I knew they became typeless. It's a weird move. It's like overheat power and then you lose your fire typing. Oh for crying out loud. I'm expected to fight hampered by coal like this, no matter the fact I'm shivering means I'm truly alive. They would need to introduce a new type. Oh please don't. You remember the last new type they introduced? Are you sure you want that? Again? Venetas before Gen 6 using Roost would be typeless. He was a pure flying type. Did they change that? I don't have any fire type moves. Aww. Wouldn't really do anything. I have Seismic Toss. He'll be a normal type if he uses Roost now. I guess that also applies for Corviknight's previous forms too. The only other new normal uh, single single type flying type. Pick him up, put him down. Burnout fails if the user is not a fire type, making the move always fail after the first use until the Pokemon regains its fire type, which can be done by switching, I see. Okay, I see. You can't, I don't think you can, you can't, skill swap, oh shit. Skill swap doesn't affect uh, Shedinja, it cannot be used on him. It is illegal. For good reason. Roost is used, Roost is used by flying types, but all flying types have a secondary type, except for Natus, essentially. So they become, they lose their flying type and become pure normal when they roost. 
Volcarona also does get Roost and it doesn't lose his typing. Same with Charizard, if it Mega Evolves, the Charizard X and, and uses Roost. I believe Scizor is the same. They only lose their flying type if they were a flying type. They don't lose another type if they roost and they're no longer flying types. Can Shininja learn Mimic? No. There's no silly, ridiculous way to get Wonder Guard on a Pokemon that should not have Wonder Guard. Trust me. You can, however, um, you can get a Pokemon. That, yes, you can, but that requires your opponent bringing a Pokemon to trace it. So you don't really have a say in that. Like, uh, I remember way back when I saw a, I saw a video it was titled "The Quickest Wi-Fi Match Ever." Dude sent out Shininja. His opponent sent out Porygon too. Porygon 2 traced uh, Wonder Guard, and the guy had no fighting type moves, so he just had to forfeit. Trace in a double battle traces your opponent, not your uh, partner. So there's no way to trace Wonder Guard on your team. You would only be able to do it in a situation that benefits your opponent. Or unless your opponent brought the Shedinja and you brought Trace, in which case, well shit dude, better hope you traced uh, on a good Pokemon. But I think the only Pokemon that can trace Wonder Guard and be effectively immune would be a Pokemon like Porygon 2, who only has one weakness to begin with. But, of course, no Pokemon that has Trace as an ability. No Pokemon that has Trace as an ability can has no weakness. And you, the thing about Trace is you can't just give it to an opponent either and then have it work, because that's not how it works. <laughs> It traces the ability right away, and then it's done. If you switch out, you lose the ability. Should enjoy having him substitute in his move set. It can, but it probably can't use it. Its move pool is the same as uh, its move pool is the same as a uh, Ninjask, and for that reason, Shedinja can learn Final Gambit. Final Gambit is a move that knocks you out and it does as much damage to your opponent as HP as you had left when you used it. In other words, it is the greatest Focus Sash Breaker in existence. <laughs> That's all. Isn't it weird how Shedinja has defense stats when it's a Pokemon with one HP? Oh goodness. You notice the, the people with the worst taste in music are always the one with the most confidence in it? It's amazing. It truly is. Alright. I don't know what I'm doing now. I wasn't paying attention. Why is the defense stats for Ditto? Because Ditto can get hit before it transforms. Shedinja can get Mimic by transferring from Gen 3. Oh. I, I have to go to the tunnel, I think. I didn't read what Drayden said. Oh, no, I grumped it. I grumped it. Shit. Oh, well. I can't remember what button does what anymore. Who has fly? Anyone? Anyone? You? No? Did I? Oh, I gave it to the barrel. Right, 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 right. Shedinja shell smash is a move, would it make a lot of sense? Uh, if, I feel like if Shedinja shell smashed, it would die. Because it is literally an empty shell. 
God damn it. Holy buttons. Alright, Babarel, take me back to... Undella Town. Okay. I didn't catch a Pokemon to the south. So, let me do that. Let me get a Pogi down here, and I'll get a Pogi on the past the tunnel. No, it wouldn't be usable. Oh, no. Didn't expect this. It would, I mean, it would definitely be usable in the sense that, like, you can, you can definitely do something with it. Actually, are there any priority moves that kill Shedinja? Hmm. I don't think so. Shadow Sneak, you're right. Shadow Sneak would kill it. Sucker Punch, that would kill it. Use Endure, no. If you give it a Focus Sash, it works. Focus Sash for Cycle, baby. We never die in out here. Except uh, in the event that you fight a sandstorm. <laughs> that one rock move? You mean that one rock move that is only learned by one Pokemon in the entire series? That <laughs> is a Gen 7 Pokemon. <laughs> Excel Rock, yeah. I like your rock signature move. Oh. one. It also dies to weather. Or any status. Wonder Guard doesn't block status moves. Or weather damage. I mean, you could give it a... You could give it a... Like, safety goggles to avoid weather damage, but then you lose your other item. You know what you could give it? A life orb. Rampardos would excel rock. You know that would be the only thing it does from that point on, right? Rampardos uses Choice Scarf Head Smash, or is a Trick Room Pokemon. But if it actually had access to a priority move like that, it would be... Well, I don't know if it would be better necessarily, but it would definitely get some, uh... It would definitely have some niches. Poison bite. Should end it with weakness policy. If it could live, sure. Unfortunately, Shedinja's move pool is really bad. I don't know if you know this. Shedinja is a physical attacker. It's... It can learn X Scissor, Shadow Claw, and Shadow Sneak. Those are like its only real physical orientated moves. It's not a good Pokemon. Oh boy. Well, I right rather hate this uh, setup of Pokemon right now. Yep, this is awful. Rocky Terrain was the thing in Rampardos to learn Excel Rock. Why do you want Rampardos to be stupid? What are you doing? You know what will happen if you make a Pokemon with that high a base attack stack have good speed, right? You know what happens. There's no bounce. Oh boy. Rillaboom Syndrome. <laughs> Times two, really. Although I wonder, I wonder who's stronger between a Grassy Glide Rillaboom Choice Ban or a Choice Ban Excel Rock Rampardos. It really makes you wonder, huh? All right, well this battle sucks. Oh, Dragon Pulse goes across the screen. It deserves Excel Rock. I can't say I agree, but I. I don't, I don't know if Rampardos really deserves to be as bad as it does. But I also think a Pokemon with that much physical attack having any form of respectable speed stat outside of the use of a Choice Scarf 
is a nightmare. I mean, look at Darmanitan. Darmanitan has not equally as high, but still incredibly high uh, physical attack. Surprisingly decent HP. Pretty good speed. And no defenses. Its ability is Sheer Force, which increases its Flare Blitz's power by 33% <laughs> on top of its stab increase in raw attack stat. So that Pokemon presses Flare Blitz, and if you don't resist, you're fucking dead. So that that's what happens with Pokemon with high stats and high and speed. They press one button, and either you die, or they die. That's the exchange. Alright. Why am I going south? I'm not really sure. PMD Kecleon. I miss PMD Kecleon. Should have been with shiny Kecleon. Rillaboom 2 shotting flying steel types. Yeah, the fact that Ficious Ren is like a 2 hit KO on Toxapex. When you're doing that, when you have that much damage output, something something's going wrong. When the Pokemon who are supposed to counter your, uh, your power by resisting your move do not have enough defense to handle said move, it's a, it's a problem. I'm here, I made it. Oh, rotation battle. Trick or treat on a non-ghost and no, uh, no press curse that turn. That would be pretty pog, but the only Pokemon that learns trick or treat is Pumpkaboo. And I don't imagine any situation where you can put a, a Pumpkaboo against a curse sweeper and hit Trick Room and be like, haha, I got you, and then curse yourself. Like, why would you, what, what's, what's the plan there? What do you do after that? What's, what do you do after that? I need to know. Moves like Trick Room and, uh, not Trick Room, Trick or Treat, uh, Forest Curse, those moves have neat applications, but because only one Pokemon each can learn them, you can't really do anything with them. Soak? Soak is a similar one, and it's learned by more Pokemon, for sure. But turning to Pokemon, even a Pokemon Grass-typing usually fucks them up. Water's not a bad type defensively. <laughs> well, let's catch a Pogey. We go. Very well. Oh my god. You're fine, you're fine. I do think it's fun to look at, uh, like, the insane damage calculations on certain setups. But I also think that Pokemon being capable of doing that on a, day, uh, a regular basis to an entire team is a bit much. Especially when you get multiple Pokemon like that. There you go. Simple Beam, that's a weird move. When it's heavy rainfall season and is drawn up by warm sunlight to dance in the open. Okay. Hmm. Uh. Aloha. A lot of fossils I can't do anything with. I don't think I can reach the Abundant Shrine. I'm not switching. I'm not switching to a Pokemon that can't run. This is fine. Getting close to wrapping it up anyway. I'm tired. Now I had to close my window. 
Oh, that's me. I drag on this just three Ditos stapled together. Come on now. Ugh. Turn around. Just think, I could have had one of those two on the team. Could have had a Lunatone or a Spinda. Amazing. This is the route I use to grind a lot in white. Okay. So much for that. Time to return. than I remember, but I guess most of it's waterfalls. Okay. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm supposed to go to the tunnel now, but I'm a little, I'm a little spent. The dude's dancing for no reason. Oh. Straight to the point, I suppose. Got the badge. That's all that matters. Seven badges. summer to end, dude. Alright. It's amazing how much energy you just lose when it gets hot. You just don't want to do anything. It's ridiculous. It's like a meme, but it's true. All it takes is getting a little sweaty and you're just like, well, I guess that's the end of all of my enthusiasm and enjoyment of life. Anyway. That's it for Pokemon for now. Um, more on Saturday. And we'll go to whatever Marlin's place is called. A couple more routes as well, and then I'll we'll, we'll switch out of Pokemon. Can't wait to see how that's going to go. So, we'll see what happens. <laughs>